I'm delighted to announce that this roundtable, after one year of running this at more than 300 agencies, is officially sponsored by my good friends at Gorgeous. Gorgeous are the number one rated help desk for Shopify merchants and they work with almost 6,000 brands across the globe. Um, in the agency that I ran, Gorgeous were a key part of my tech stack. Um, so this is not a sales pitch by any stretch of the imagination. Um, for me, uh, for all the agencies that I work with, most of them have Gorgeous built in, whether it was through me, through my recommendation or on their own, because it is a fantastic bit of kit. Um, and it, it's such an easy, <laughs> such an easy sell um, when you build it in as part of a retainer model. Um, so I'm extremely grateful to be able to go from the agency world and working with Gorgeous very closely and now in the work that I do with agencies, still having them support me. Um, so anyway, enjoy this round table. Um, the round table here is a, a group of agencies getting together to really share some of their learnings, um, some of their challenges, what's working, what's not working and brainstorm with each other. And at the end of this, I'll follow up with a little bit about how I build technologies into my tech stack and, and how that's a good way to um, bring in a revenue um, commission. I have an agency that brings in about 20,000 euros on a monthly basis just on commissions from some of the tech stacks they work with. So it's definitely a nice little learner if you're doing it properly. Um, so enjoy the round table and I will catch you on the other end. Hello. Hey, hey, Rachel. How's it going? Great. No camera. Come on, I haven't seen you in so long. Don't be shy. Oh, camera's on. Camera's on. Wow. Never look better, Rich. Never look better. <laughs> you look great too, Rachel. How's it going? Not as good as you do. <laughs> I see you throw a you throw a plant, not hair, but a plant. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Yeah, great. I, I'm good. Um, I'm super busy uh, with different things, putting plans together for next year. Um, but yeah, all, all's good. Nice. How's New York treating you? Pardon? New York? <laughs> Slowly opening back up. Um, the, the Delta variant's kind of messed a few things up. I caught COVID myself a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, but I see events taking place in person, so um, so yeah, New York's coming back, I think. When are you? When are we reconnecting? You've ghosted me. I know. I I know. I do that sometimes. It's not a good. Yeah, not a good I know. Trait. I've known you for so long now. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, my wife complains about it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but how's business? How's how's everything going? Agency world is good. Um, I feel like this last quarter, which is one of the things I wanted to talk about on this call, this last quarter was pretty fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Super That's crazy. Bad. Like a weird, it was a weird quarter, I think, like from the sales point of view and new business. I just got off a, a, a sales, like with the sales mastermind, a sales masterclass. So I brought that girl mm. um, to talk about like prospecting and LinkedIn, LinkedIn outbound stuff. Um, and even she said that this last quarter was significantly quieter than it is usually yeah i speak i i was speaking to somebody at shopify as well and they said the same thing like it's been quieter than normal mm -hmm. and a lot of agencies that she's working with as well are finding the same issue she, she said like unless unless the agency's had like a sales team for the last two years it's it's pretty tough when you say quiet are you talking about in terms of like taking on new clients revenue hey michael how are you hey man i'm well how are you I'm good. I'm good. You lost weight? I have. I've lost like 35 pounds. Oh, damn it. Well yeah. done. Congrats. That's the only well, reason I came on the call, so people would congratulate me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so in terms of just like leads coming in, you're in Korea's. Like Chuck Pye said, it slowed down. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was just curious because I know I've, I've had a lot of leads that are just now starting to convert. Mm that I've had in the pipeline. Some of them have been like nine months. Um, wow. and, they're, and I know and they're just finally starting to convert. And it's honestly either because they had some, some issues throughout the pandemic getting supplies, goods. Some of it's been people who are, um, who have worked with other people and they, those people ended up sucking and now they're like back to kind of square one and they're, they're trying to decide who they're gonna work with. I'm like, 
you need to, even if you don't pick me, I'll refer you to someone else. Cause like the people you're choosing to work with are going to screw you over. Cause a lot of people are saying they can do Amazon services, but you know, they, they don't know how to get into it. Yeah. Hey, so. yeah. Hey. I think I think that's the case for everyone, for sure. Like leads are starting to pick up. A lot of the agencies that I work with, I've got roughly with the various different bits and pieces that I do. There's about forty something agencies in there. Um, most people are starting to see now. Um, after a couple of quiet months, they start to pick up the tail end of uh, August and start of September. But before then, it was just the summer was just kind of dead. I feel like people weren't making decisions or. Yeah, we, we're seeing the same as well, Rachel. We've had a bit like what Michael just said. We, we had leads that we've been speaking to for nine, 12 months, and it's only now that we're starting to get a bit of traction with them as well, um, for whatever reason. So it seems to be a trend. And they're all different kinds of people, people that have been referred to me, people that I've found on LinkedIn, wherever the case might be. So it's not like just one uh, referral or one, one channel. Yeah, yeah, same. Yeah, but very uh, mixture of different channels, but same sort of behavior. <laughs> just take ages to make a decision. Sorry, I'm just reading the comments. I saw there's like noise in the background and people are getting distracted. Um, I think I muted Chris because I think maybe it was coming. It's, Chris, have you got kids running around in the background? And also, he's Doctors for Dancers. Is that like a stage name? Oh, you can unmute. Sorry, I think I muted it so you can't. Um, anyway, sorry, I got distracted there with all the comments. I don't know who Doctors for Dancers are. It does sound like a stripper name, but that's fine. <laughs> Whatever. I think it's also called Doctors Without Any Borders. Sure, or Knickers. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're, they're acting like a super Batman spying on us, not even responding to what their name is. But it's fine, whatever, I'm going to move on. I'm going to hide the chat because I'm getting distracted. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit today about a crazy summer, but more importantly, coming to the end of Q3, any of the agencies, Rich, you've known me for two years. God bless you. You're only 22, but you've known me for so long that it's aged you. Not that you don't look a day over 25, but whatever. Um, end of quarter, this time of year is always the time to start reviewing the work mm -hmm. that we've done for the last 90 days and also planning ahead. So just before I get started and go through that, I'm going to share after this a template that I use with all of my agencies because I've discussed this frequently. Is there anybody who does that consistently where they do 90 day goal setting or plan ahead? A lot of people I know do like annual goal setting, especially like planning your annual revenue goals, which I don't know how you can plan that for the entire year, but you're obviously smarter than me. Um, but in terms of like 90 day, 90 day goal setting, does anybody do that actively? I think that's what we're um, trying to implement that at Roswell now uh, for the remainder of the year and um, similar to the EOS model, uh, but that is one of the um, elements in EOS that we're trying to uh, implement at Roswell. So but I'd be interested in seeing what your strategy is. I'm also doing the same thing after talking with you, Rachel. So like I would plan out yearly goals, but I did Q2 goals. I didn't reach all those. It was kind of a crazy Q2 because I had a lot of changes going on, but it was, it was really for the best. We've dropped some clients up in revenue and in profitability because we've just been charging more. So um, we're doing well in that sense. But, um, some of my Q2 goals are carried over into Q3 because I just now got to like getting back to Q3 and it's almost over. So we'll have some different stuff for Q4, but I've actually been able to implement some stuff and it's been, um, it's been effective overall. And it also gives you a little bit shorter goalposts instead of having to kick all the way down the field or whatever the right footballers term is. But um, you know, uh, that's been helpful because it's also more manageable for my team. Cause I know they're not thinking like for the year, they're thinking, what do I do this week? What am I doing this, this month? What project am I working on? And so I'm trying to frame that better for them. And I think it's been, been helpful. Anybody else? I, I, one question I would ask before I go back to that, is anybody here doing EOS? EOS? EOS. Uh, EOS. Yeah. Sorry. Is anybody following EOS at all? Well, as I mentioned earlier, Rachel, we're, we're going through the Get a Grip book mm -hmm. with all the senior leadership at Roswell. And we're going to decide whether we're going to actually implement that. As you and I had spoken, that's a two-year process. Or if we're just going to um, take the nuggets of 
of value that we find that are applicable to Roswell um, and potentially implement uh, those. Okay. But no one else. It's interesting because I know a lot of people dip in and out of EOS, but um, I don't know that they, I, I don't, some agencies do it, some don't. So that's why I was wondering. We, we run something like it, Rachel, um, based on uh, that, that tra you know, traction. The book. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so it's uh, that's kind of um, I think that's built on top of the US um, approach, or maybe it even is the US approach. I can't remember now. Um, but we do the uh, the ninety day uh, strategies, the pulse, the weekly pulse meetings, uh, the annual um, uh, vision traction um, VTO. I can't remember the, the whole thing. So so we 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 run that um, as a uh, as a leadership team in here. Um, I think it's good. I think I think if you want to get started with it, you just got to jump into it. Uh, I think it's very hard to uh, read the book, do all of the things you're supposed to do, and then start. Um, so I'd recommend um, starting with a with a quarterly meeting as much as you can. It's going to be a bit of a, a shit show, in as as Rachel would say. Uh, that would say correct. As you would say, uh, the first time you try it. Um, uh, but you just got to kind of like agree with everybody that that's the way it's going to, you know, it's going to be a little bit, you're, you're finding your way. Um, there's actually a tool um, by a, lo a company, local, a local company in Cork. Do you know, uh, you know, teamwork, Rachel, do you? Yeah, I know teamwork. They're kind of, so, they're a project management tool. Project management tool. Yeah. Um, they have, they have a tool called instant agency. Um, it's instantagency.com. Um, and that is, that is kind of their own, Slightly, like very recognizable, but uh, a slight tweak on the approach to EOS and uh, and that's and that side of things. Um, and in particular, we use their their weekly meeting um, tool, which is great for running running a pulse meeting because you know the EOS has a specific way of running meetings. You know, you you you, you know you you start uh, with a SIG and you you have headlines and you have to dos and and then you have issues that you work your way through. Um, we find that pretty good, um, and we really get to stick to that kind of this whole level ten meeting, or you know, this this idea of a ten out of ten meeting um, for a pulse meeting for, for a, on a weekly basis. And so we run that as uh, with the senior leadership team, and we run a variation of it with our clients actually as well. So nice. I've never heard of that tool. I know of I know of teamwork. I know that tool. Kind of well, not super well, but I know it kind of well because it's in Ireland and I knew, I knew the company there. Yeah. Um, the, know, the, the instant, that instant agency tool, they, they kind of set up as kind of like a hackathon almost. It's not, it's not perfect, but you don't pay anything for it. It's free. Um, mm -hmm. But you, uh, you can kind of like, it's great for doing those meetings, for setting the agenda and for, for people to gather and, and, and add to the meeting and then to, you know, to, to, to track issues and to work your way through issues and to track no, you know figures numbers um uh so you know i mean as part of that eos uh approach um everybody has a number and minds the number and reports on the number on a, on a weekly basis and so on um so i it I'd looks, rec um, recommend it. yeah it looks um for something that's free it looks really good actually just the yeah. top level and to the point which is often a good approach i think <laughs> Yeah, it also has a few tools for the actual setup of the vision traction thing and um, and the uh, the the quarterly um, rocks and and all that sort of thing as well. Yeah, I'm definitely going to check that out. I love a good free tool because there's there's I mean there's so much stuff that you have to pay for out there, but if you can repurpose some free tools, why not and build it in. Um, so just goal setting in general, this is definitely one of the, for a lot of the agencies, like uh, Michael was saying there earlier, a lot of agencies I speak to, when I do my initial discovery or audit with them to kind of figure out what's going on, it's the same problem over and over again, that you have all of these things you need to get done, but you don't really know what to start, where to start or how to prioritize because you're so inside those problems. So generally speaking, this time of year is a really good time for agency owners I mean, whether you're leadership in an agency or running an agency to go through and kind of separate all the noise. I have to do it with my business all the time. I've got 42 agencies that I work with. I have multiple businesses. This is not a flex. I mean, I've created this problem for myself. Um, and sometimes I just, it's just 
where whatever is noisy and whatever is squeaky, that's the one that's going to get the oil. Um, and it doesn't really give me much of an opportunity to really focus on what my goals are and what it is that what I want to achieve. And I had a conversation with an agency owner actually two days ago, and he was pretty deflated um, because he'd had a pretty tough summer. Uh, and he's got an agency that's doing well. It's more than 20 people. It's turning over six figures a month. But it was a tough summer in terms of employee stuff. And there was a bit of employees that he had to get rid of and employees that he had to replace. And it just was really rough on him emotionally. And he's just like, I just don't know where the fuck to start. I have all of the stuff that I have to do and I don't know where it is where you have to start. And for me, it's just figuring out, okay, what is our game plan here? In his case right now, for all of us, Black Friday is around the corner. So we just stripped out all of the stuff, all of the noise, the things that he had to do that wasn't relevant to achieving that goal of really hitting that Black Friday, Cyber Monday momentum. Um, so you could do your webinars and your marketing stuff in and around that uh, to drive customers. So for him, it basically just cut off about 75% of the workload that was on his plate that was kind of rising to the top that wasn't really necessary. And then within 24 hours, we had figured out what his strategy looked like and what his game plan. And he is just executing his newsletter went out today. He's got over 100 signups for his webinar happening in a couple of weeks. And it just all kind of fell into place. But it was just being able to really focus. It. I have to do it again. I have to do it with my business. I get contacted all the time by tech partners and people that want to speak to me and mostly agencies that want to speak to me that are one person band, which is fine, but they're not really ready to scale or to grow. And I want to say yes to everyone and help them all, which is why I created this round table so I could do that at scale. But I, I have fucking 45 hours worth of phone calls scheduled every single week, best case scenario. I do not have time. Like I cannot be spreading myself so thin. At some stage, you have to be able to draw the line and be like, this is not fitting into my goals right now. Um, but the issue is a lot of you don't really have, you have annual goals of I want to hit 30% growth or I want to, whatever your goals are for the year, but it's not really broken down into bite-sized chunks that allow you to really achieve anything. And in most cases, I speak to agencies that are two, three, four years in. I spoke to an agency recently that is more than, I think they said like 22 years in and they have never got their agency past seven people. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? How can you be 20 years in and still only have seven people? And it wasn't a conscious choice. If you want to be that size and that's a conscious choice and that's totally cool and it can be insanely profitable and a super smart strategy. But in their case, they just physically have not been able to grow past that size. And I feel like you have to like, you have to really fuck up to, to be 20 plus years in and not be able to get past seven people, like to grow your business to that size. Something has to be wrong with that model. I think the time management thing is, I'm not the best at, at time management, admittedly, but when it comes to guarding my time, I've just had to do that more. And I think part of it was a mindset shift. Like, do I actually value my time? And if I do, what, what calls am I taking? You know, people reach out on LinkedIn all the time. Anything that's real spammy, I, I don't really pay attention to. Same with email, right? I don't even respond because it, it's like they're not putting effort into it. So they're, they're just playing a volume game. So I'm not worried about that. But some people get pissed at some of the pitches they get. I'm like, why are you even wasting your time? Like, they don't care. They're not reading the responses because you're not interested. They're going into the next thing. But when it comes to time, we all technically get the same number of minutes and hours in a day. And so if I'm taking calls that just aren't aligned with my purpose, and if it's something I'm even interested in, but I know it's not going to help me this quarter, I'm like, you know, hey, I, I'm going to be available in a couple months if you want to talk then. And if they really care, they'll follow up. And then maybe if I've got more time, I'll talk with them. Or someone will say, hey, I'd love to get on the phone and, and find out about synergies or you know whatever terminology they're using. And we've got this new tool and I'll just say, look, I, I, I'm, you know, I, I like to know a little bit more about stuff before I actually get, jump on the phone. If they're really willing to talk, then they'll have a conversation with you. They can send a voice note, they can send a, a video. And that's helped me, I believe, to be more productive and put a wall between myself and anyone because people want to take your time. They don't care about your time. They're thinking about themselves. They're thinking about what they can do, the, the leads that they want to get for their business. And so the more that I do that, the more efficient I feel. And I'd also say the, the, um, the less stress I feel about even like connecting, like, oh my gosh, I have this call and I have to move over to this other thing. And I, cause I'm the, I'm the sales team. So I'm doing, you know, 50% of my stuff throughout the week. 
uh, it is sales calls or, or something um, of that nature. And then along with team meetings and then the planning and stuff that I'm doing sales and marketing. So like, if I don't schedule time for that in my calendar, even like prospecting, I block that off my calendar so people can't schedule time during that. And so it's like sales prospecting is two to three hours on Thursday, whether I get to it or not, it's a different story, but I intentionally block that off. So I have time set aside. So I'm like, Hey, you can go and book a time on the calendar link if you want, if I'm open to having a conversation with you. But if there's time in that spot and they're like, Hey, you don't have anything open until the 22nd. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's what I have. If that doesn't interest you, then, then it, it may not, it must not be that important. When it comes to goal settings, I know we've got some new faces here, so I might just pull a measure like super shy. And if you're on, if you're, if you are super shy, then you're on the wrong call. <laughs> because I love to swear. Um, so when it comes to running a business and goal setting, is there any strategies that people here have in place that they've implemented effectively or that have not worked very well? I was going to say, it sounds like the devil's on the call. Oh my God, quick. Can we get a priest in the room? I'd be interested in the devil's strategy. I would not. I'd be straight out of here. Motherfuckers, I am not going to dark side. Uh, I'm, I'm sure he has regular pulse meetings uh, tied to quarterly. I'm sure he's got his. We just, we just implemented EOS, is what I heard. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, he's got that shit locked down. Um, so, anybody in the group, anyone that has um, good strategies or fails when it comes to goal setting? No. I, I well. Well, we we we've uh, you know, we've been doing it wrong. Basically, we would be doing up on the on the on the annual basis, and then tracking that quarterly and monthly. But we're going to be reverting to the ninety days that I think was mentioned. Uh, but has been mentioned by you and quite a few other people over the last few weeks on the calls, and um, setting short-term goals. Still looking at stuff annually, but not getting too bogged down in it and trying to be too precise and looking looking ninety days ahead basically so no we've done it wrong i don't have any 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 advice on how to do it right um i've taken that away from this forum to, to do it better for my agency um i'm a newcomer um we we have our setting is about 60 days and that has been fruitful uh we actually had a last six months uh probably the best we've ever had. Um, we're not exactly a perfect agency where we work with agencies more than anything. We get a lot of e-commerce business, but we are more in the integration part of the business. So we get um, uh, we get to work with a lot of agencies, uh, helping them integrate so that makes their business you know, work. Uh, sometimes they get a uh, a new business that requires certain integration with somebody else. Uh, and uh, we make that happen. That has worked for us. So we create a lot of partnerships in the last six months or so with different, different entities. And we got a lot of leads. And those leads are incredible. I mean, they, they convert 50% of the time. Um, however, I don't know how long it's going to go. <laughs> but... Uh, we see this happening in the last two quarters, a lot of growth that way, but I don't know if it's gonna slow down or anything like that. Um, but 60 days and concentrating, working with partners have been very fruitful for us. A partner is meaning that, you know, like Big Commerce, Shopify, or agencies that work with them or, or some ERP system that need to connect with some e-commerce platform, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And we keep getting leads that way because they need to be able to sell, they need to be able to, uh, uh, to, 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 to make it happen. Uh, they need an integrator in between and and we make it happen for them. And I guess that's the that's the, the reason why the success is that. Nice. 
Yeah, I mean, partnerships, especially with a quieter sales season, the only agencies or most of the agencies that I saw that didn't take the hit this quarter or when things got quiet are agencies with good referral partners in place or a good, a good network of partners. So whether that's other agencies, um, agencies that are not competing with you. So if you're a dev agency and then you're partnering with a design agency or an SEO agency, for example, or an integration agency, um, or good industry or platform partners. They're the like you need to have with sales, it's inbound, outbound, and partnership sales. And you need to have three firing at all cylinders to make sure that when one or two are down, you have at least one still working. Um, I have one of the agencies, and he does, I want to say, half a million a month in revenue. And he gets at least 50% of his business through his platform partnerships and tech partnerships. Um, not from other agencies or just just tech partnerships, mostly platform. And I have another agency that's doing probably about 150k a month, and they're a young agency; they're only two years old. And he gets all of his business pretty much through a network of other agencies that are doing complementary services. That's been the case for us. Mm. Um, a lot of agencies come and say, "Hey, we have a customer; they need to do this, and if we can make it happen, then we can get the business." and we make it happen for them, so we all get the business. Mm. And we work together. And uh, 80% of the time, the last six months has been the case for us. Mm -hmm. Nice, that means you've worked hard to build out those partnerships. I've built most of my business through partnerships and having a good network or leverage my network. Um, so back specifically to the actual goal setting, when it comes to setting goals, is there anybody else in here? I mean, I could just fucking talk for the whole wire. That would be no challenge for me. Challenge accepted. However, is anybody else here has done exercises in goal setting? Not people that have done it with me because that's cheating and then you're stealing my thunder, but not Rachel goal setting, but on your own where you've actually set goals and used different systems or processes or frameworks to do that. That it's worked. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, Christoph, we can hear yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I use uh, objectives and key results and, and try to integrate it with Asana because, mm -hmm. like, like the good thing is that you can link the, the goals with your projects. And so it's like a top down. And uh, I, I, I like that quite. It's working well. The only, and, and I always try to, to start with the, with the top goals on a quarterly basis. And uh, it's not perfect yet, the setup. But uh, what I like is that it's not that, that it's linked to the, to the regular goals. Jerry, what and well, well integrated in the system. But I think you can do it always better. It's always like uh, in the beginning of the quarter, you're, you're, you're in it and then you're daily business is sweeping you away. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I suppose the, uh, like, I, I, I guess everybody has to some degree been involved in goal setting. Um, so I, I'm not sure if I'm answering or getting the question correctly, but um, what, what, we, what we tend to do is um, try to figure out where we want to be in about 18 months to three years. Um, now, like typically, things change completely and you know three years ago i know for a fact that the stuff that we're doing now i wouldn't have thought of doing three years ago um so but it's it's more just to kind of assess let's say um uh things like i mean even as simple as re revenue expectations you know how many how much do you want uh to tr to try to aim to turn over um let's say in the next 18 months um so what should what kind of your what should your monthly turnover be in 18 months time, how is that split down between um, retainers for BAU development and for uh, marketing or growth related uh, um, pieces of work for new projects and so on? What does that look like from a resourcing perspective? Um, and if you're if you're going to if you're going to work backwards, you know what kind of figures would you want to put every quarter for what you want to hit? So if you're developing if you're developing something new. Um, you know, it, it's, uh, try, trying to uh, understand, like, let's say, uh, in, introducing it into the sales process, introducing it into the customer success um, program, um, so people are talking about it, um, putting some figures against it, understanding when you need to resource it then, so, because we always bootstrap everything we do, so we're always trying to, you know, we, we, we're willing to invest about, let's say, six months in advance of 
of of of where we want to be, but you're largely bootstrapping. And so if you don't, if 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 six months later you aren't making what you want to make, then obviously you've got a problem because you're not funding the position that you've you've resourced. So um, we kind of we 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 look at it that way in terms of bootstrapping it up. Um, and you know, like what what I find is, especially with the management, the senior team, like some people don't think that way. They, some people don't think the way. I, I guess um, I, I I would think about goals. So, like if you say to if you say, well, you know, let's pick a brand new area that we want to get involved in, and we want to do a million euros in turnover uh, in that area in twelve months time. How does that? How would that be broken down? Um, and how would that look like on a monthly basis? And people lose people lose their minds, you know, sometimes, especially if you if it's if it's your own team, and they they're they're all they're kind of worried maybe. Holy shit! Does this guy expect me to turn this around and deliver this in that period of time? But you know, I mean, if you don't if you don't put a goal and you don't have a have an idea of how you're going to get there, you definitely definitely aren't going to get there. So oh, for sure. um, so like we we operate it that way, and then but we also try and figure out well how do you resource that? Do people have enough time to do it? You know, what how much time do you need in order to, in order to get to that? Um, and there's there's one quote from uh, Jeff Bezos who I know you know Jeff Bezos. Yeah, uh, uh, has his, uh, has his, maybe he was the devil there earlier on. Yeah, I actually know him pretty well. I talk to him all the time. Exactly. <laughs> he said that the, the rocket was modeled after me. The, the, was that what it was called, the M squared rocket? Yeah. Oh, and yeah. did anyone see the shape of that? It's, I mean, it's a dead on replica. <laughs> it's a beautiful rocket, Mike. So, um, but he. <laughs> But like the, the quote there is, um, uh, you know, he, he was quite, he was talking with somebody uh, who said to you know who said, uh, well, Jeff, you know, congratulations on your results this quarter. You know, they're amazing. And he was kind of thinking, what, what's he talking about this quarter? You know, uh, this quarter was baked three years ago. Um, we planned for this quarter three years ago, so we should have had the congr- congratulations three years ago. We've just we've just rolled out our plan, and here we are. Um, so it's that kind of thinking about. You know, th- thinking into the future, where 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 do you want to be in in whatever amount of period you know time, and building your plans towards that rather than, let's say, very short term plans. I can second what uh, Gerard is it Gerard or Gerard? How do you say it? G- uh, usually, Ger. Ger. Okay. So, like Ger said, um, I have done long some long term goal planning. Uh, I mean, I've done some stuff with Rachel, but I've also done some long term goal planning. Uh, with someone that helps uh, also from a, from a financial perspective. And we set like, like what is your three-year, five-year vision? And then, okay, what are we doing in the next 90 days? What are the three things, the two things that you're doing um, over the next 90 days that you're going to work on that are going to help get you there? And then basically it's building blocks. So like uh, like Ger said about um, Jer, I'm not, I'm talking about Jer. Okay. Michael, you're not Irish. At all, you can't find it. Sure, sure. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Um, you're, you're okay. It's it's it's, it's like German without money. I'm actually Norwegian, mostly. I'm Viking. Um, not really. But anyway, I I broke it down. Broke it down with 90 day goals, and that's been much more attainable. And it also makes me feel a lot better because I'm actually accomplishing something, and so I feel like I'm putting stuff behind me and, and progressing forward. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the great advantages i suppose people don't talk about it that much when it comes to goal setting but when you do start to hit those those targets um it's it's very motivational and very confidence building for the team so if you if you say okay we're going to do this semi let's say crazy um goal and, and the team are all panicking because they're like how in god's name are we going to hit those kinds of targets and even if you get like halfway three quarters way there you know, you don't have to hit them bang on, um, but people all of a sudden see it is possible to do it and, and recall back to that 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 goal setting um, session uh, and then, you know, understand how to use it again in the future and, and so on. And it really does motivate people quite a bit to know that they, they can think about something some distance into the future and work on it to try and make it happen. I think you could also set really crazy goals and it wouldn't be helpful, but I think you should set your goals set your sights high and 
to what you think is attainable. Don't go for something that like, you know, you can hit, go for something that, that feels like it's pushing you is getting outside your comfort zone and then try to, to work up to that. And I say that because I think, you know, I know Wayne Gretzky said like, you miss hundred percent of the shots you don't take, but I think that really is true. Like you can aim for the ground um, as well and hit it every single time. But is that really going to grow you? Is that really going to get you to the place where you want? And ultimately, for me, it's about having impact. So yes, I want to generate more revenue, but I want to be able to impact people in a, in a couple of very distinct ways. And so in order to do that, I have to, to, to dream high. And so even if I fall a little bit short, I can look at the progress and say, wow, we're up 60% compared to last year, and we're not going to quite hit this top line goal, but I know that we've progressed in these you know, four areas. And maybe I need to be more realistic about goal setting too, but I don't want to do something that's just, I know I'm absolutely going to hit because then it's not really, but how am I really growing or pushing myself? I guess I want to see continual growth, uh, both um, in myself and in my, my agency. So, I mean, I guess if you're comfortable just uh, doing the status quo, then by all means, you know, set mediocre goals and, and, and continue to be mediocre. But that's not, that, I mean, I would argue that that's not really goal setting. That's milestones. If you're going to just do shit where it's like, well, this will tell me if I'm doing what I need to be doing. That's really just setting milestones, yeah. like in a project. And that doesn't really count. Um, for me, when it comes to goal setting, there's a couple of things that were mentioned there. There's, there's two, for me, being on the other end of it, working with agencies, there's two things. There's the actual goal setting, which in a lot of cases as entrepreneurs, we don't do very well. And then there's a second thing, which I think is even harder is the accountability. Because the agencies that I do know that have all of their goals and they have all of these like iPad drawings and everything just all scribbled out. And there's just all weird and wonderful mad scientist ideas about how they're going to fucking take over the world and they're going to, you know, invent this super amazing thing actually getting it done is a different story. It's like I was having a conversation with my husband the other day and I spoke to an agency and they're like, yeah, I want you to sign an NDA before you talk to me. And I'm like, listen, no offense, mate. I've consulted with over 600 agencies in two or three years. There's literally nothing you could tell me that I haven't heard before. There is no secret sauce. The difference between whatever your idea is and getting it done is execution. If you don't execute, your idea is worth fuck all. Um, but it is really that execution, that accountability. So for me, those two pieces together, I mean, starting off, I have, I can share this after, and some of you have seen this before. Hang on, let me, okay, I'm just gonna, I have to say this every time I share my screen, just so people don't judge. Well, you can judge me, I don't give a fuck, but I have an issue with tabs. And it is what it is. I think you're quite a goal setter with the tabs. Like you, I, you are goal setter. First... I've been like, I just wanted to get it to a point where it's basically like, <laughs> pins um but these have been open since monday so it's not great this is basically an insight into this is what happens when you have 42 clients um this is a template that i use and i repurpose with all of my agencies all the time there is nothing you know super magical about this template whatsoever however it is highly effective and what i've done here is i've added so i break my favorite number is three i'm obsessed with the number three it's not it's not even a healthy obsession it, it's, it's entirely unhealthy so i try and do everything in threes especially food um so i break down my goals into finance time and create so what I want my revenue goal to look like, which in many cases, when I do goal setting with agencies, this is this basically is the linchpin. This basically is the cornerstones for how everything else is going to unfold. The next thing is time, where you need to be spending your time in the business. And a lot of that, when I say where you're spending your time, really what I'm saying is what you need to delegate. That's usually what it means as a business owner or a leader in a business. And then the third one is create. So whether it's, marketing collateral or sales collateral or processes or documentation documentation that will allow you to um, delegate better so i have here for example um so i set up goals and then strategies and then after the strategies then we set up tasks so in this example here i have a revenue goal for an agency that they want to hit a million dollars this quarter or the, over the next 90 days maybe that goal for you is 100k maybe it's 500k it doesn't really matter what it is and an example of a strategy then would be to hit my monthly target of doing 100K a month on retainers. And this month, because obviously, well, this is an annual goal for this example, because that's then 85K a month, which gives you a million in revenue over 12 months. And then I put my tasks in place. With a lot of agencies, I use a tool um, 
I could give you an example of one, but I'd have to dig it out and then I'd get distracted in all the tabs. But I use a tool called uh, MindMeister. You can, there's lots of different tools for mind mapping. And generally speaking, what I do when it comes to mind mapping is we start with that revenue goal and figure out, okay, for the next 90 days, we want to hit 250K. Um, and our current recurring revenue is 50,000 a month. So that will get us to 150. And we've got 100K to close. Now, do we close that 100K on new biz or do we close that 100K on recurring and close retainers? Then we go and look at the sales pipeline and say, okay, we've got 250K pipeline, 20% close rates. That means 50K is going to be coming in from that pipeline. So I've got my 250K goal, 150 already locked in, projected revenue of 50 from there. So I'm already at 200 and all I need to do is find another 50. And basically, by using those strategies, you can very quickly pinpoint and say, okay, well, if I'm closing this and closing this and I have 50K left, then where do most of my leads come from? Where is my best lead source? Are there any clients that I'm working with now that I can upsell? Are there, are there any clients that are ending their projects now that I can move over to retainer? And I could quickly identify, probably in about 15, 20 minutes, exactly how you hit that goal based on what you have right in front of you. Um, then the time goal where you're going to be spending your time really understanding, okay, well, I'm spending so much of my time right now client facing or doing too much design work or doing too much consultancy when it comes to um, discovery calls or development or whatever it is that you're doing. And if my goal is hitting this number and I'm spending way too much time client facing, then I know in order to hit this number that I need to spend more time in partnerships or prospecting or in sales in general. So I need to then shift my time away from the client facing stuff, which is not bringing me towards this goal. And then I look at my team of people to figure out, okay, who in my team can take that over and what do I need to do? So in this example, they don't have a project manager. So one of the tasks I would need to do is hire a PM, recruit a PM, put it out to my network and get somebody on board. In order to do that, I need to create the onboarding. I need to create an idea of what their job description looks like, how I'm going to measure their success and how I'm going to train them in the role. And of course here that this time goal then leads into the create goal. Um, so in this example, I've said that I don't have enough leads in the funnel to hit my target. So I need to create a lead generation funnel in the next 90 days. Now, what I would definitely, and I see this happens a lot. I see a lot of agencies where they throw in like fucking 7,000 tasks that they want to get done. And just like Michael was saying earlier, it is not realistic. It is not realistic for you to be able to get all those things done. And whilst I agree, because it happens to all of the agencies I work with, you set your 90 day goals. I've never met one agency that has hit every single thing, checked every single thing off their list. It just doesn't happen, but that's fine. Just like basketball, when you have that backboard to hit, you're going to shoot a hoop more often than not. When you have goal setting, you're going to be able to move closer to your goals and be able to prioritize them. Because if I know that my revenue goal is this, and I have in here that I'd like to create a, an exit interview template for employees whenever they leave, and I have no employees that I'm planning to fire or that I think are going to leave in the next 90 days, that goal of creating an exit interview template does not help me hit this, this, or this. So it is not a task that I'm not going to include in the next, next 90 days. I'm probably going to park it and have it on that list of stuff that I'll get to when I get to. But if it doesn't hit me, one of, help me hit any of these three key goals for each section, it, it's, it's just not a priority. And that's the thing about we're all entrepreneurs, so we're running businesses and we know that it, there's just all this fucking shit to do all the time. It's just constant stuff. I, I mean, I work minimum 80 hour weeks and it's just never enough to get through the workload that I need to get through but at the end of the day I need to be able to look at my objectives and my goals and be like well are my clients happy are they achieving what they need to achieve have I done all the stuff that I need to do to hit my top goals everything else all the other shit where I want to like um, rebrand all of my documentation that's probably going to happen in 2000 and never and it's shit that I would really love to do but I'm never going to get done I either decide do I put it on a backlog or be smart about it and delegate it to someone else um, but it's all that sort of stuff it's not really going to move the needle for me it's not going to make things it's not going to help me achieve any of these are not my goals by the way if I was hitting a fucking million dollars in revenue I would not be on calls for 45 hours a week that's for sure um, but it's not going to help me hit any of these three goals, in which case it's just not a priority. And I think that being an entrepreneur, sometimes we're cursed with 
either perfectionism or procrastination and those two things I think go hand in hand a lot of times and sometimes you have to be you have to force yourself to be comfortable with doing good enough and getting done what needs to get done and sometimes quick and dirty is fine it doesn't have to be perfect you don't have to achieve everything but you need to be moving one step closer um, another thing that I wanted to mention again this is a very quick and dirty Google Doc, it is nothing super exciting, but it just gives, I've used it with almost all, most if not all of my agencies, they've all had this and gone through this at some stage, and it does give a sense of clarity, and there's lots of other templates that you can pull online, and lots of other versions of this, this is just the one that I prefer. Um, so a couple of things that I would say when it comes to setting the goals, I can stop sharing my screen now so people can stop trying to count my tabs. Oh, uh, Rachel, can I just say one thing? I mean, that, that's, that, that, uh, is fantastic. You know, you and I have been, um, working, um, you know, uh, closely on trying to figure out operations goals and, and strategy planning and so on and so forth. And that document that yeah, I was very intrigued by it I, uh, on our next one-on-one, -on -one, I'd really like to take a deep dive in that and make sure that it's. Um, completely filled out because, um, you know, we, we, uh, um, you know, have been, we, I mean, I just, uh, you know, I, I'm, uh, my name is Nihar Kulkarni. I'm the managing director of Roswell. And I've been on calls with some of you guys beforehand, Michael, I think so. Um, and, and uh, Richard as well, too. And, you know, I respect what everybody is talking about and doing. And I love these calls tremendously. And the, the value add of the, of what you're providing, Rachel, is, is tremendous. But that in particular, that, um, that document alone, I think is going to um, be able to help me figure out what we, at Roswell really are looking to accomplish within the next 90 days. And, mm -hmm. and so I just wanted to say that. Especially Q4. I mean, Q4 really is a fucking circus. It really is a circus for the industry. And what I would recommend agencies do as well, if you are an agency owner or leader, um, if you're an agency owner, this is something that I get my agency owners to pass down to their management team. And it's kind of like a little bit of a test, but whatever. It's to kind of test your management team to see if they are in line with what your objectives and what your vision is. So you kind of work on this as a management team to get, I mean, individually, and then you come together and you set down what your goals are, and then you cross-reference it with what each people are doing for each department. And you'll see very quickly which departments you're going to have problems with. Because sometimes I look at those 90-day goals for, and I, I work with this, so some of the work I do with agencies is, with the agency owners, but like Nihar will tell you, also with his leadership and management team, some of the directors in, in his agency. And it's interesting when I look at the documentation from the senior leaders in the agency, and I'm just like, no wonder this department's a fucking shit show, because this manager or department lead does, is not clear on what his objectives are. They have lots of shit they need to get done, but none of it is pointing in the right direction, which usually means that the leader of the company has not done a good job at communicating what their objectives and what their vision are. Um, and I think that that's, you know, I talked about accountability, but next to accountability, that delegation and communication for sure is definitely a massive flaw of almost all of the agencies that I work with, being able to effectively communicate what it is that you're looking to achieve and then delegate that off. And then in turn, holding the people in your team accountable. But meanwhile, what you're doing is you're like, fuck, I've got all the shit that I need to get sorted and got all the stuff I need to take care of. Let me just figure out how I can do it. And then you spend all day, every single day, problem solving, reacting to fires, jumping from one call to another call to another call. And you get to the end of the day and you're like, well, I actually haven't done anything today apart from just pure chaos, absolute madness, but I haven't actually achieved anything. And it's so common, which is why for me, I feel so strongly end of the quarter, start of the quarter. So like in the next few weeks, that is the time for you to reevaluate what you've done. Whether you've set goals for this quarter or not, it doesn't matter. Reevaluate what's happened this quarter, good, bad, and ugly. And then take that data to then pour it into what's happening next quarter and what you really want to achieve. So whether that's defining your operational process or the handbook for the agency or your revenue goals or boosting your recurring revenue or team structure, whatever that is, and then making sure it trickles down. Another thing I wanted to mention, which someone sort of touched on, but I can't remember who, um, 
But something I do with agencies, especially when it comes to revenue goals, and even though the time goal and the create goal are very important for an agency, the revenue goal is going to, it's basically the tip of the spear or tip of the arrow. That's the one that's going to drive the rest of the goals forward. Typically what I do with agencies is I will go through. So in this example I gave with like a million dollar revenue goal, what I will do then is I will break down what the million dollar revenue goal looks like. And then using that revenue goal, I would then break down how that impacts the team. So if I'm saying that I'm doing, for example, I'm doing 50K a month now in recurring revenue. And by next quarter, I want to get that 50K to 75. And I have a three person team managing that 50K. If I increase that by 50%, then that would assume I need to add at least, but you can't add 1.5 people because people don't come in halves, but I need to add at least one person or maybe add a second person knowing going into the next quarter, I'm going to need that person anyway. And what you can do is you can start to map out what your hiring structure looks like and what your org chart is going to look like. Once you have that structure in place, you can start speaking to the key people in your team and telling them, when we hit this goal, I'm going to bring another person underneath you. And then we hit that goal, another two people will come under and you will move up. And when you move up, this is what your new role looks like, whether it's salary or job description or whatever. And by doing that, the people in your team are going to be held accountable. They're going to be motivated. And also you have clarity on what your hiring is going to look like and what the growth of your agency looks like. It all starts and stops with just sitting down for... I mean, Mike, Michael, you spent what maybe an hour doing that ninety-day goals before. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't that long, and I was just going to say that I think just the process of saying these are my goals. Let's say your goals are just terrible, but at least you for one quarter are seeing, okay, I didn't set my goals correctly. Here's what I'm actually performing like, and then you can set a benchmark of, okay, well, normally I do this. What's an actual goal and not a milestone that I can reach? It doesn't take a long time to create the big goals where where it took more time for me was saying okay what are the actual components that are going to go into this and not uh not just creating extra steps but also making sure i was being thorough so finding that good middle ground of you know i've got these five strategies in or three strategies and here are the tasks that are going to go under each and um, by the way nihar I've, I've definitely been on a couple of calls with you and, and i've appreciated you shared something about uh, raising prices on clients. We talked a, a little while ago and, and how there are some clients who you, you know, you didn't go the full hundred percent on, but maybe you went 50%. And, and I used that same strategy. Well, I did something a little bit different, but with one client and specifically that wanted to keep working with us, we, we, I said, look, I'm not going to raise the full price on you, but here's what people are paying. You're getting us for a deal. Um, and, and so I, I really appreciate that uh, information. I raised prices on, on all the clients and some of them, uh, left. But uh, anyway, I, I would say that the delegation piece is important too, because if you try to take on, like I could write out all these goals. If I say, I'm going to go out and do this, I'm fooling myself. And so if I'm not going to my team, even just regularly saying like out now, I do monthly team meetings. We don't do like weekly uh, or daily standups. We do have um, like weekly management calls and, and other things like that. I try to keep it um, I, we, we communicate a lot in Slack, but I try to keep that as, as, as minimal as possible if we don't need to. But on those, I just say, all right, here, here's where we're at to our goals. And then I tell people, what are you, and ask them, what are you going to do to help get us to this goal? Because, and, and every little piece that if someone creates a better landing page on Amazon, that client's product page is going to convert better. They're going to get more sales and we get a percentage of revenue across all of our accounts. So if they're doing their job correctly, we're going to succeed. I've also told them as we grow, if we can start, we, we're getting more processes in place, like performance evaluations, uh, things like that. I said, over time, we can start building in like regular quarterly bonuses. If we can start to take on the amount of clients that we have and, and not promise them you're going to get this percentage. We just say, that's something that's in the future. Here's what you even have to look forward to. Because when I've and Rachel's right that if, if, if people are failing, you didn't do your job. Probably half the time people fail in re reaching their goals. It's because I didn't even help them set goals. I didn't help them put, I didn't put expectations in place of here's what you have to, to do. And so some people align with that. Some people didn't align and they, they ended up leaving. My team was like 16 with like mostly part-time people at the beginning of this year. It's now down to eight with most of them being full-time 
Um, we've improved revenue, we've improved profitability and have less clients but are charging more. And my goal is to take on more clients, but I just give it to my team. I'm like, look, guys, I can't do this on my own. You're the ones that are doing the work. I'm setting the strategy and I'm, and I'm going forward and, and handling the things that I can. But when I delegate to you, I need you to do this. And the people that want to be there step up and the people that don't, they don't. And I say this, I don't think this is a good fit for you anymore. You know, I'm, I'm letting you go. And I'm like, Rachel, I love people. I want to help them, but also I, I can't. Yeah. Well, if, if you're cutting into my capability to earn revenue, like, I'm sorry, that's, yeah, that's a no go for me. Thanks for that feedback, Michael. I appreciate it. What yeah, I mean, for sure. I've got a lot of stuff off these calls and I've talked to other people and said, you should just get on a call and join it. Cause even if it's just one small piece that you can, you can take away, it, it can be impactful to your business. So yeah, for sure. What I want to do is I managed to find a, a mind map of a goal setting exercise that I did with an agency before there's, I removed any of the information here that could be considered sensitive. Um, but hopefully you can see this. I can, I mean, this is a pretty nice tool. I love using this tool. Like you have your little emojis on the side. So sometimes when I get really excited, you can see my frequently used emojis there. I, I, bang a few of those out um but what we did in this case so this was for we did this at the end of last year for this year and we had a goal of hitting over a million um and we already surpassed that goal going into closing out q3 anyway so we're above and beyond what we actually did in this case was start first with the revenue goals knowing that going into q1 this is what we wanted our goal to be we already had this amount locked in of recurring revenue and then this would then of course be the what the retainer goal or the sorry the project goal would look like um and then just broke it down one by one in their case what we did because we knew roughly how many bills that we want to lock in so we have here 150k bills 510k bills you go through and you look at the team and we went through the team to kind of figure out, well, if we land all these and you layer them, at what stage do things start to come unstuck? And we knew that based on these numbers and the team that we had in Q3, for sure, we're going to have to start hiring another dev. In this case, we had to hire another dev in Q2 because things moved much quicker. Um, now, we surpassed these goals. That's not always necessarily the case. And these, these goals were set. I think I usually recommend that quarterly, you, you, cannot, you should be aiming for around 20%, 25% quarterly growth. That's roughly what best practice should look like for agencies. So whatever your goal is, I feel like, is that correct? I don't know. I can't really count without a calculator. Yeah, that's right. So 180K plus 25% is 225. And that's how we set the goals because that is a realistic growth target or a healthy growth target for an agency. If you're growing significantly quicker than that, keeping up with um, recruitment and training and stuff is going to be tough. And then you're just going to churn. Um, and then in this case, then we really identified based on what our goals are, where are the gaps. We knew that the retainer offering needed to be refined because we were giving them too much value. We knew in this case that the delivery process needed to be tightened up um, because we were over servicing significantly and we wanted to implement some kind of standardized theme setup. So these are these 10K builds. So rather than doing lots of custom work all the time, we could just bang out a quick 10K, get you up and running and get you onto a retainer pretty quickly. And then going through for the agency owner, identifying what her role is in the company, sales, project management, she couldn't do, she shouldn't be doing, sorry. Client strategy, she really shouldn't be doing. HR, okay, she probably shouldn't payroll. And just identifying like in Q1, this, in her case, this was her key objective in Q1 and Q2, that was her key objective, Q3. And we stuck to that pretty similarly. Interestingly, in this case, she actually fell pregnant after years of trying. Um, so having this plan in place made it, took the stress off her very significantly. Um, and we were able to then effectively delegate. And we had quite a lot of bumps on the road in terms of the employee stuff. I'd say half of this team has since been replaced, but it's been for the better. But just knowing that we can always, and then what we do is we set the annual goals. So we do that in December. And then each quarter, then we go in and reevaluate and then really build out the details of what those goals look like. Um, so it's definitely an exercise. Again, there's nothing genius about this. There's nothing like, super brilliant i'm not like a super fucking smart person i i can read and write and i have been to school but apart from that it's nothing too exciting it's just being 
practical, practical and being pragmatic about your goals and how you're going to get there. Um, so what I will do on the back of this for sure, I will email, um, email Ryan that Google Doc, that 90 day goal setting. And I would encourage anybody that attends these round tables, spend even 30 minutes to just quick and dirty bullet point down exactly what it is that you want to achieve going into Q4. Um, and like I did with Michael, before we were even working together, before you joined the Avengers, he sent that over to me. You'd come to a bit of a crossroads and I was like, work through this document, send it back and we'll go through it on a call together. Um, and it just kind of helps refocus and reset where your mindset is because sometimes it's really easy to get just caught up in all of the, the bullshit and the noise. And, you know, when you're in business, 90% of the bullshit is people. So whether it's your employees or your clients, somebody's fucking you in the ass somewhere. And that, that's just the reality of running a business. So it's just up to, up to you to be able to be like, okay, I need to take a step back and reset here. I need to get myself back on track and remind myself that I'm a fucking entrepreneur and I've got a business to run. And while I'm serving clients and serving my employees, I still am an entrepreneur at heart and I can't lose sight of that. So I definitely recommend doing those 90 day goals that MindMeister tool, I've got a paid account, but I think I used it for a long time for free. So you can actually, there's lots of different tools, but this one. I Google think. also has Google Draw. If you use Google Suite, it's, yeah. it's somewhat similar. So it's, it's free as well if you want to use that. Exactly. There's loads of free tools out there that you can do that really well. Um, but I would suggest whether if you have a business partner or someone else, but to go through and really dig into the details and you will see very quickly where you're wasting your time very, very quickly and what I need to delegate, what I need to get off my plate. It'll be super clear once you get it all down. Um, and if anybody wants to like, you know, if you want to fill out that document and take, have me take a look at it, um, it'll cost you 4 million. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> 4 million dollars or, or euros, I think euros are more expensive. 4 million potatoes, because um, the potatoes here are shit. It's very difficult to get a good spot over here in Grand Canaria. So I would actually take payment of potatoes, to be honest. Um, but I'm totally happy. And potatoes. Um, well, I do. Uh, it's potatoes, the skin's on. I will say that for sure. I don't like the dirty, mucky potatoes, but um, yeah. I, like, I like either red roosters. What about Yukon Golds? Mm, but American. I like a, a white potato. That's what they're called in Ireland. But they're okay. you know, not racist, but they're white potatoes. Or <laughs> I, I like a good red rooster because they're kind of yellow on the inside and red skin on the outside. Ooh. Basically, like me in the sun. Let's get on the outside and get on the inside because of the fat. Um, did anybody have any questions? I know we're just over the hour now, but did anybody have any particular questions about 90 day goal setting or quarterly goal setting or anything at all? Anything that wasn't clear? No, no question, but it was extremely valuable for me. So uh, thank you for that. Okay, where are you from, Jordi? I'm from Holland. From Holland. Oh wow! And, uh, yeah, it's for me the first time that I'm here in session. Uh, but I'm running a Shopify development agency. Um, so yeah, now I'm, yeah, I'm just started now the second year. So uh, and now yeah, ready to skill skill harder. So nice. Uh, that was super really interesting. Good. Also with the night day goal setting, which is not currently not uh, what I was doing. Uh, right. Yeah. I actually work really closely with uh, the guys at Code. Yeah, yeah, they are they are the biggest in Holland, but uh, of course. my aim is to, uh, well, to, to get second for now, so. <laughs> second, okay. I thought you were going to say first there. And I was gonna uh, say no. <laughs> Code are working with me, exactly. so that's not going to happen, but fine. <laughs> any other questions? Phil, did you have any words for wisdom? Phil from Gorgeous. Are you, are you ready to do your 90-day goal setting? Yeah, thanks. Well, nine today, it's too late for uh, the next 90 days because as you mentioned, it's Q4. Yeah. So now it's all about uh, execution. Um, yeah, and we have some pretty uh, pretty aggressive plan, but amazing session again. I, I think I'm going to join all of these now. I wasn't the last one for the first time and it was just so uh, valuable to chat with, uh, with all of you. Um, yeah, and again, like understanding the revenue streams that you guys are trying to add to your agencies and how you get to those revenue goals and how you can capture more of uh, the services around the life cycle of an e-commerce brand is really something I'm trying to understand better. So uh, yeah, again, thank you so much for, for having me here. Of course. We'll follow up with some tips uh, to, uh, to agency owners on how to increase your, uh, 
your, your share of the pie uh, of the revenues generated by e-commerce brands. Exactly. Nice. Any other words of wisdom? Is everybody like suitably motivated to get their 90 day goals set up? I know it's like super um, cheesy and boring, but honestly, it I, is very thrilling. I sent you, um, I sent you a link of how you can group your tabs in group Google Chrome. <laughs> So you could group them by agency to reduce your stress. You could put that on your 90 day goals. <laughs> Excellent. Well, if we were also make a desktop for each agency. She can make, have each oh. agency could have their own unique desktop. We're getting a bit carried away now, Lisa. I, I think that, that sounds like Lisa. We're getting a little bit too excited now. Um, I have a question if that's okay. Go for it. Thank you. My name is Kaylee and I'm just starting like an uh, e-commerce agency that's just come out, like come in lockdown through helping businesses um, form partnerships and leads through uh, in the e-commerce and Amazon space. And so for each client that I have, I have like an email that is their email address. So it's like Kaylee at Kaylee at Kaylee at. And I'm starting to sort of get a little bit like Oh my God, I've got meetings, back-to-back -back meetings constantly. So I was wondering if other than Calendly and Asana, if there's a hack where you kind of like if you're on your iPhone and you can see all your calendars and all your appointments just in one space, how do you guys manage this? I mean, oh. we have uh, 35 people. Have, oh, sorry. Like, make ahead, no, 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 go ahead. I was just clarifying, like, how do you consolidate all of your meetings and calendars and various appointments? Basically, yeah, so that you're not missing things, you're not double booking things, and you don't have to keep going back and forth with a million browsers, which I have the same problem as you, a million browsers.com. <laughs> I, I, I take it every email is on a different emailing platform. They wouldn't be all in the same because that would be too easy, right? Yeah, exactly. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Kaylee, so what? Um, we have thirty-five people at Roswell. Probably about twelve to fourteen are more client-facing, so those are the ones that really have to worry about their calendars. And so, um, and forgive me if I'm not understanding the question, but are you asking about how to um, organize your calendar versus everybody else's calendars on, on uh, in a dynamic and fluid basis? Yeah, it's just for myself because um, at the moment I've got one like employee and we're growing, but it's like right now I'm doing everything as I learn to delegate and all that stuff. So it changed the game for us, um, which is, and sometimes the answers are staring right at you in your face is if you have, um, uh, as long as you have a Gmail um, powered email, you can do, go to calendar.google.com and you can subscribe to other people's calendars. It also works with iCal once you do that. And then in that way, when you're scheduling meetings and whatnot, you could see what's on other people's calendars. And so that way you're not, you're, you're, you're saving those 15, 20 seconds of like, hey, are you free here? Or are you not? Okay, well, what about this? So on and so forth. You know when someone's free when you're doing that. Um, and then- okay. it, and then another uh, hack that I use a lot is text expander. I don't know if anybody's aware of that, um, but text expander, especially when you know as you're uh, when you're in the position of running an agency and whatnot, you're gonna you you do have phrases that you use over and over and over again, right? Um, you know that, uh, and and it could be as simple as like a reporting format that you're reaching out to a merchant on with um, you know the status of where they're at with certain things and hours left and remaining and etc. Um, and so I've been using text expander for years now, and it's funny because it sends you a a, a, a a summary at the end of the month about how much time you've saved. And, you know, I, I, I've saved like three hours in one month before, but then you multiply that by, you know, a year, two years and whatnot, and all that time comes back to you. It's basically the concept is, is that if you have to use a phrase over and over again, for example, my email, I, my email, I write all the time and it's nihar at roswellstudios.com that takes you know four or five seconds to do you know or two three seconds whatever it is but if um the way i've done it is i just put semicolon em and then it puts my email address and off the race that's it and so it's a split second but when you're doing when you're managing so much and as you're growing you know split seconds you know that you save add up to hours that add up to days okay that's perfect thank you so much and then i'm sure everybody on here uses loom a lot right yeah, I've um, heard of that. Is that where you do it like a recorded thing, a recorded like summary? Yeah. yeah. Yep. 
And then um, we use that a lot of times just to explain things to merchants or, you know, just if, if people need to, uh, if people skip a meeting and just need to, um, you know, get the, the, um, the TLDR, you could just do a quick loom um, of whoever did it and, and then share it with the people that missed. So those are some quick hacks that we've been implementing that have helped us. Thank you. That's awesome. I would say, Katie, based on my experience working with more than 60 agencies in the last few years, your problem is time management. It's not really consolidating where everything is. That's, that's okay. probably your issue, is, especially starting yeah. the business. So what you probably need to do is pretty quickly, you need to be ruthless with your schedule and block, like do time blocking where you block out, for example, Monday mornings are for planning and Monday afternoons are for prospecting and Tuesday mornings are for sales follow-ups or whatever that looks like and have some sort of schedule in place so that you can schedule stuff in according to what the block. So maybe you have like a half day dedicated to partnerships, for example, and then when those requests come in, you look at your calendar and you're like, okay, there's a partnership request. Every Wednesday afternoon, I have partnership activities. That's when I get. So it means that your headspace is in the zone. Oh my God, I love it. This is like the best advice. That is like the nail on the head. I love it. Thank yeah, you. I think that's what your issue probably is. It's probably, it's just entrepreneurial. It's just what we all go through and just being ruthless and just blocking out your calendar. I have my calendar and it has almost no availability at all for the rest of the year because I've scheduled everything out. And yeah. I then choose as and when well i say that i choose but then i take phone calls until 11 12 o'clock at night but only because i i want to be on those calls i don't have to um but i would say time blocking and just having some sort of schedule in place for your calendar that you know you have certain stuff dedicated at, at particular days of the week thank you that's amazing yes for any final words of wisdom from you from sweden no not really I'm glad to be back after some time away from all of this. Yeah, you took a long time out, didn't you? Yeah, that was needed, so. I bet it was. You've had a crazy couple of years. Yeah. Okay, we ran over by 10 minutes, but actually not too bad. Sometimes I waffle on for another 20 or 30 minutes. So pretty good for me. I've matured, yes, for as you can see over the summer, I've matured significantly. You'll be pleased. Yeah, sounds great. <laughs> sounds brilliant. Um, so I'm going to let everyone go, and I recorded this for the people that missed it or want to go back. Did you, was that a little wave goodbye, Anthony, or a question? No, I just had a quick question. And I know you showed that 90 day, and I'm pretty sure you said um, it's going to be sent to somebody. But can you just reiterate where is it going to be sent that 90 day? Um, Everybody that's on the sign up for this, I'm going to send the recording round, and I'm going to email that. Um, Beautiful. Google. I'll just download the Google document so you can upload it into your G drive and you don't need to worry about share access or anything like that. Okay. I'm going to knock that out today. Okay. Perfect. Lisa, Thank you. anything, any final? I just wanted to say goodbye and hello. I came okay. on screen. Hi and bye. Excellent. That was a big have a great rest of the day. Thank you as always. All Thank right. You. I have one more question. Sorry. Does, um, you know this group, you contacted me and I didn't even know about this and it's amazing. Um, do you like connect everyone as well or like do people connect off the back of this? Um, like on LinkedIn and stuff, is there a way to... Totally. What I do on the back of these, everybody who was on the call, I make a note of every single person that attended and then I'll post something on LinkedIn in a couple of days and tag everybody in. Oh, amazing. What happens in the back of that, then everybody can just connect with each other. <sighs> Gold. Okay, that's so good. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, I can't, Phil, I can't manage another fucking Slack group. If you could see how many Slack groups, <laughs> I wake up in the morning and it's, I've got like 50 or 60 notifications from various Slack groups and it's just, I can't, I can't do another Slack group. I did recommend it before a couple, like 18 months ago and everybody was just like, no, 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 we don't want Slack. So I created a LinkedIn group and nobody was active there and I thought, fuck this shit, I can't be arsed. No more Slack. <laughs> yeah. Say no to another Slack channel. Okay, but you have access. You should have, I think, you should be able to see everybody who's on the calendar link as well. Um, and I usually email everyone around. I don't know if I blind copy everybody. I don't know what the fuck I do. Um, but you should be able to see everybody who's on the calendar. But anyway, I will tag everybody in the LinkedIn so you can connect with each other that way. Thanks. Is that cool? All right. Well, thanks to those that stayed over.
and I will catch you somewhere digitally, virtually. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Right, take it easy. Bye. Take care. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that round table. As promised, I said I would finish up at the end with just a little bit more about how I build technologies into my tech stack with my agencies, and more specifically, how that can work with Gorgeous. So if you don't know a little bit about Gorgeous, overall, they, they massively streamline the customer journey. Um, they, the, the technology automates about 20% of FAQs, um, which it's there to help uh, reduce support costs uh, and all of that stuff combined is a fantastic way, a proven way to increase customer loyalty. If you know anything about what's going on in the industry right now, loyalty and retention is one of the top topics um, in e-commerce. Um, so anything that is built around that topic of retention and retention marketing, which you've probably heard a lot about, um, in my experience, um, we uh, perfect example. We had a brand that we worked with that were um, very busy brand. Very, they grew Instagram brand grew very very busy, and we worked directly with the ecom manager. And <laughs> I could never get stuff through to her. I was constantly chasing her all the time, just constantly chasing her. And I would take her out um, for lunches and dinners and drinks and. I'm like, what, what's going on, Zoe? I'm constantly sending these messages, I'll never hear back. And she said, I am balls deep in support, dealing with customer support and dealing with like returns and inquiries and blah, blah, blah. Um, and I was just like, oh, okay, uh, let me figure out a solution that's gonna work. So I then I found out about Gorgeous um, and I introduced Gorgeous, the technology into that brand. And it was a game changer for me, building retainers around the clients. It was a game changer because I was able to push things through with this e-com manager so much easier and quicker. And after that, a bit of a light bulb went off and I was like, okay, this is going to be a key part of my tech stack for the clients that we're working with. And I put that when clients moved from projects into retainers, I recommended that. Very few of them said no, to be honest. It was a really easy sell. It's not really a sell, it's a recommendation. Um, and it was a game changer. Uh, so not only that, Anybody who knows Gorgeous will tell you that. They're great partners. They're, they're a fantastic team. They're super good fun. In fact, I have uh, one of the team coming over next month to join me at a retreat I'm hosting here in Grand Canaria. So that should be super cute. Um, and additionally, uh, one of my agencies actually uses the technology for their inbound uh, inquiries and uses it pretty effectively. So there's lots of different uh, use cases for this, more than perhaps what people realize. It's more than just help desk or support. Um, if you're working with brands and you're working with them on retention and increasing uh, loyalty and branding, I would say you should give this a crack. So at the end, there'll be, there'll be slides at the end of this now um, with some of the partner information. If you want to know any more about them, again, this is not a sales pitch. This is a genuine recommendation because I have worked with them for years, as do a lot of my brands. Um, give me a shout and I'm happy to make an introduction or there should be a link here that you can go and just sign up and get on a call with them. See ya.